This is Kim with Chiaga Farms Academy. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to check out the new Springfield Echelon after thousands of rounds. Before we begin, we're going to have Neil come in and do a tabletop, talk about all the specifics of it. If you'd like, we're going to put timestamps throughout the video so you can skip ahead to the parts you want to see. Here we have the Echelon as promised. We're going to look at who it's for, is it any good, and do you want it? So let's take a look. One of the major upgrades or major features that really separates this from the rest, because there's a million polymer striker fire guns out there today, is the variable optics system, the VIZ. And that is a plate back here that comes off. The unique part about this is there are no additional plates. So this will hold up to 30 different optics directly to the slide itself. There's some pins that I'll show you here in a second that get in inside that you can configure for the two main base footprints. And then you can attach your main optics right to the slide. With the pin system, and I'll just kind of show you with my fingers, there is a cool video on, on Springfield's website if you want to see it. On the front pins, when you take this cover off, they kind of look like, uh, they almost look like kind of like a, a little lip on them or a claw. And what happens is when you put the actual the optic on there and start to put pressure downward, that little lip or hook, if you will, actually uh, kind of forces itself onto the optic. So the side to side, the windage, like as things get pushed onto the side of the optic, those front pins actually help give it stronger stability onto the slide itself, which is a really cool feature. Let's talk about sights. So they are really proud of their U-notch sights, and that's great and wonderful. And if you're a U-notch person, they're tritium, great, wonderful. They both have a combat edge on them. I happen to not be a U-notch person. I like the three-dot system. And what I'll typically do is I will black out the rear dots back here. So it's just completely black. And then I have a tritium front sight. That's the setup that I've got. Again, you can pick either one, but most importantly, they are absolutely metal and they have a good combat edge so that we can manipulate the gun with one hand if we need to. The next thing that we'll talk about are the really, really deep serrations. I mean, the one thing I have to say is that Springfield did their homework. They listened to the customers. Being late to the game, I guess, is a good thing because they found out what people liked, what they didn't like, and they adapted it all on one platform. You're gonna see a lot of different features from a lot of different guns. And I would say some of the best features really put into this gun. So these deep serrations, it's almost like a custom slide. I, as you guys know, I'm a big press checker. I like to be able to Press check the gun to make sure it's loaded, and these front serrations are incredible. You're gonna see that there's deep uh, grooves cut into here. And one of the nice things about that specifically is that if you are gonna do a press check, that your finger isn't gonna slide off into the port. In addition to the front, in the back, you're also gonna see, a again, this is a very HK-like, um, a, a deep well in here, so you have a real good surface to be able to get a hold of that when you're gonna go ahead to rack the gun. However you wanna do it, you're gonna have plenty of grip on here, whether your hands are sweaty, bloody, or muddy. Now we have the other cool part about this, which is the COG, that is the Central Operations Group. So just like the SIG P320, where you can take the entire uh, fire control group out, which is the serialized part. So this frame and slide are not serialized. You're gonna be able to configure this gun down the road however you want. As of right now, which is September of 23, uh, we have pretty much this one uh, formation as far as the, the grip, but they're gonna come up with additional grip modules for different sizes where you take the cog out and place it into your new configuration. The one thing I will tell you, and I haven't seen many reviewers talk about it yet, is that it's not as easy to get that cog out as it appears. It's not like the 320, which is fairly easy. It comes out the same manner, and that is that you're gonna remove the takedown uh, lever, you're gonna pull that out, but then getting the cog out, it's a little, it's a little frustrating. It, you're gonna to have to do it about a dozen or more times before you finally kind of figure it out. You're gonna to have to kind of slide it and pull up and it's not super easy, so just be aware of that. Moving on to the magazine release, which is generally not a big deal, but in this case, it's a totally ambidextrous gun. So both the magazine release and the slide lock levers are on both sides of the gun. You don't swap them, they're there. Good and bad. Uh, one of the guns I used to really want to like was the FN 509 when it came out, and it was completely useless to me because I have large hands, and when I were to go to press the magazine release, it would press against my finger and I couldn't get the magazine to come out. This gun, I've had zero issues with that. I've been able to drop the magazines on this gun every single time. I've had 
no issues whatsoever, and it works great. And so if you are a lefty out there, immediately this gun is set up for you. It comes with two magazines, and they're both 17 round magazines, but one of them has an extended base plate. It's taking you up to 20. So a couple of reviewers were talking about the fact that uh, there was an extended base plate, which I'm like, well, of course there is. You can see it here. But they actually provide you in the box with the extended base plate. So if you so chose, you can have two 20 round mags right out of the box. And I think that's a really nice feature. Aftermarket base plates for most guns are gonna cost anywhere from you know 30 to 80 bucks or more. And they actually provide you one right then and there. So you could buy another mag, which by the way, they do sell on their website. You could just buy another mag and you could have your, if you're gonna carry the gun, a flush fit setup. So as you would imagine, by the way, on the grip as well, you'll see at the very base, there is a little cut out there. So if you did have a magazine that was jammed in there, you'd be able to reach in and rip that out pretty easily. And you have your full or your extended magazine. It also has the grip texture built right on it. Again, and the mags fly right out, no problem. They're high quality metal mags, which is very nice. And again, you get your extension along with it. The last thing, which I don't think is real cool or really matters that much, is you do get a uh, magazine loader with the gun itself. The other thing you're gonna notice up close is the stippling, uh, the, the texture that they added to this. It is very Hellcat uh, model-like, but I would say it's even better. And they put it everywhere. I mean, they actually put it on the front of the guide rod. Why? I don't know, maybe for aesthetics, but they put it everywhere. And the nice thing about this is it has a really good grip texture. The other thing that's really cool about this is on the takedown lever itself, it's almost like a quasi speed pedal where it's cut and stipple so that you can really get some leverage from your support hand. So I really like that feature. Again, it's almost like totally custom, but from the factory. Then we go to the double undercuts. This is really cool. You have your first undercut here, so you can get as high as you can on the front strap. And then you'll look here, not only is it cut a second time, but it's also stippled in there textured as well. So you can really get a good purchase on the gun. It's a really, really, really nice feature. I have the TLR1 is my light of choice, but it's also stippled on the front of the trigger guard if that's your fancy. Uh, but as far as stippling and, and texture, this is pretty incredible. Here comes the trigger. So the nice thing about the trigger, in my opinion, and I am a flat trigger blade type of person, I like a flat interface on triggers. I don't really care about necessarily lowering the weight or anything like that, uh, unless it's a crazy heavy trigger. But for the most part, most of our service guns are usable. But this has a nice flat surface and it has a very, very nice trigger. I can tell you right now. So we'll show you up close, but essentially on the trigger itself, you're gonna find a wall that's predefined. Then you're gonna get a break. From there, you're gonna have a very nice reset. There's your reset and breaks again. The trigger is very, very nice out of the box. Uh, and I said this about the new Smith & Wesson as well, the, the new flat trigger for that. I would not spend any money or time changing out the trigger. The way the trigger is right now is perfect. I wouldn't do anything with this. That's gonna bring us to the grip module itself. And here is where it gets pretty cool. And by the way, this is the case that it comes with. N not too big a deal here, but just a soft case, which is nice. But the grip module with the P320, for example, you can get different sizes, but you have to get the entire grip module. Here's the cool part with the Echelon. The Echelon actually has back straps that can be changed out. I know uh, I'm not a you guys know me. I'm not an unboxer. So this was the original box. It's cardboard I don't really care, but Here are the back straps. So it comes with all three and at the bottom It will tell you exactly what this is So this is the small the mediums on here and here's the large if I wanted to change this This is how easy this is inside the magwell There'll be a little release and it comes off and as you can see it's got a little tool to take down the gun so this is the large, pretty straightforward installation. We just line it up uh, on the back of the back strap here and slide it forward. You'll hear it click and that's it. Now you have a bigger uh, swell on the back of the back strap for you. And then you press that tab on the inside. Once you press the tab on the inside, that comes right back off and then you can put your medium or small or whatever, whatever size you wanna hear. And you'll hear that click, that makes sure it's on there, it's not coming back off unless you go inside and release that. So really cool feature. You're gonna have different sizes, but you're gonna also have different back straps that'll be interchangeable with all those. So fully configurable to what you want.
Let's take a look at these two, it's, uh, its competitors. The most common being the M&P, the Glock. Uh, I don't have the 320 here with me. You'll see here, it's pretty similar. So this Glock, just so they're on the same page and people are like, why does it look so weird? It's obviously a Glock 17, this is our SIM gun. So it, it's, the, it's a real 17, it just has the SIM upper. They're identical in all dimensions. They fit the same holsters. I just didn't want to take it off just for this uh, comparison. And then I also have a Smith & Wesson 5 inch. So this is the Smith & Wesson 4 inch full size. If we look at it from height wise, on the, but stacked up, they're virtually identical. There's really no difference whatsoever. I'll go this way, maybe you'll be able to see a little bit better behind my hand, but you got a half inch maybe, uh, because again, this is a four and a half inch hammer forged barrel on the Echelon, and this is a four inch barrel on the Smith & Wesson. The most competitive size would be the Glock, 17, once again, they are literally identical. Uh, you could probably put a level on there. They're perfectly the same height. Uh, the rear, uh, the, the bottom of the trigger guards are, are pretty, pretty close. And if we line these up, I'll just do it this way. So you can see they're, they're identical. The only thing that sticks out on this one a little bit on the Glock is the uh, SIM barrel, because again, it's the only thing that's not standard on it. So it sticks out a little bit further. But as far as the Glock 17 and the Echelon, they're literally identical as far as overall dimensions. The only other competitor as well, like I said, is the Smith & Wesson. That was the four inch, this is the five inch. So you'll see once again, and it's a good color variation since you can see that it's a FDE. Again, virtually identical. I'll put it in both ways. Doesn't really make any difference. The only real difference between the two guns, if you really want to get down to it, is that, and we'll turn it this way. If I line these up, you'll be able to see probably that FDE barrel sticks out a little bit further because again, it's a five inch versus a four and a half inch. As far as weight goes, this is the new king as far as lightweight. I never really got into that. I think it's kind of silly to argue about a gun weighing one or two ounces and that makes it better. But this is 24 ounces with the flush fit magazine. Uh, so a little bit lighter than the Glock or pretty darn close. I will tell you that because of the um, serrations of the slide and the material that's missing and the, the weight distribution, the gun shoots very flat and very smooth, which we're gonna see here in just a little bit. No good shooting video would go without an accuracy test for this new gun. So we're gonna be at a seven yard distance. You'll be able to see the hits live. It's, <clears throat> I haven't shot yet today. I have found, and it, this is just my, my thought process on it. The Echelon seems to shoot a little high. So typically more of a uh, six o'clock hold seems to be best. And my theory on that is that Springfield knows that the vast majority of users of this are probably gonna be red dot users. And so they may be kinda of thinking about the mechanical offset. It could just be me coming up with crazy ideas. I don't know. But um, all of that, it's been very accurate. So let's check it out. We're at seven yards here. And uh, we'll see how we do. All right, let's go take a look here. So not super slow shots here, but uh, we got them all in the uh, six to eight inch range here. As you can tell, I'm pretty much have my sights right here and almost every round is high. Again, I think the gun naturally is set up that way. Uh, the one thing I have found about this particular gun, which is very odd and weird and I can't really explain it. As you know, if you've done any shooting or you're an instructor, the vast majority of right-handers are going to shoot low into the left or low into the right for left-handers. I have not seen that phenomenon with this gun, which is kind of weird for me because I believe it's the Indian, not the arrow. And certainly it is, but it tends to kind of mitigate that issue for some reason. And I think it's because it's set up to shoot high. Again, for compensation of that mechanical offset of a red dot.
We're gonna run this through some paces here. So we'll do some rapid fire shots. We'll do a reload, throw that in there. All right, we're gonna try something we've never done before. We're gonna do some POV, so we'll see how this works out. No gun review from GFA would be complete without a malfunction drill. So we're gonna see how she works with that. Here we go. As expected. All right guys, so that was a rundown of the Springfield Echelon. I think it's got a great application for service and duty and the fact that you can take that chassis out. You don't need an entire armor to really break down and really get in the guts of it. It comes out in one piece. You could spray it down with gun scrubber, lubricate it back up and shove it back in and it's good to go. So I think from a service perspective, it's great. Full size gun, uh, magazine capacity is great. It's, it's, a, it's an incredible shooter and it has a lot of features already in the gun for any enthusiast. So, so far, when the thousands of rounds and students have shot it, it's been phenomenal. For that price point, you get an amazing trigger. It comes optic ready. I really like shooting it. I'm a big fan, big fan of it, and everyone that I've let shoot it is a big fan. Uh, definitely worth checking it out. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like, a share, a comment. We always love to hear from you guys. Of course, follow us here on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook, on Instagram, we put our videos on Rumble as well, and we have our Patreon channel. Until next time, remember, it's always better to judge by 12 than carried by 6.